honor. And as we go on with our point as to award dinner for the honoree, we will start with Dr. Brown is going to present the first honoree to honor Dr. Georges C. Benjamin. We all know Dr. Benjamin. Dr. Benjamin, 
It is good to see you again as one of the nation's most influential physician leaders. You have been unwilling in your support for building a true health care system in the United States, where we focus on preventing disease and improving life. I really also like to acknowledge Dr. Eileen Lister. She has been the regional four regional health consultant here in Atlanta since year 2001. As all of you know, she is an extremely influential and important advocate and a leader for reducing health disparity in the region. So, congratulations, Dr. Lister. There is no one more deserving of being honored by the APHA Black Caucus of the Health Worker. To all of other who has been honored tonight, I want to commend you on your accomplishment as well. And I also want to congratulate the APHA Black Caucus of Health Workers as you begin to celebrate your 50th anniversary this is a major milestone on behalf of the Office of Minority Health and HSS. I want to commend you for 50 years of addressing the special nature of public health challenging facing people of color in the United States. I have dedicated much of my life work to making sure that everyone has the opportunity to reach their full potential for, health, for good health, because I think this is one of the most important things that we can do for the health of Americans and for America. And I cannot describe how proud I am to continue this mission as a new Deputy Assistant Secretary for Minority Health, only two months after that. <laughs> I will continue that. <laughs> And, and the director of the HSS Office of Minority Health in August. Of course, in any job you do, you cannot have success without the support and commitment of the board range of the partners. For us at the OMH, it is people and organizations like APHA and the Black Caucus of Health Workers that share our commitment to improve health and health care for racial and ethnic minority and disadvantaged population. As we look to the future, I know we, you will continue to insist that we shine the light on the barrier facing by the vulnerable and underserved. And I know you will work with us side by side as we strive to reach those who are most in need. And as the new director of OMH, I'm very much looking forward to join you in this journey. Thank you so much.
so there'll be no jokes tonight. <laughs> With that, I want to thank you, Dr. Lynn, for those kind words, the members of the Black Caucus on Health Workers, PHS officers, my own major colleagues, and all who supported my nomination as the 2017 recipient of the Hilders Poindexter Award. With knowledge of Dr. Poindexter's contributions to public service and commitment to improve the health of mankind worldwide, I am earnestly grateful to carry this torch and to join the ranks of all former recipients who have done the same. I have faced several challenges on my way here, but each of them has only strengthened to make me stronger in the person that I am today. Winning this award would not have been possible without the inspiration I have received from my seniors and my leaders for whom I have the deepest respect. And most of all, it wouldn't be possible without the support of my husband, Sheldon, for whom has given me the strength to embark upon my next journey to the chilly winters of the Great Plains of Rosebud, South Dakota. <laughs> to service the many, many, many challenges and unmet health needs of the Lakota Sioux Tribal Nation.
so that when one talks about genetic differences in population, you have to know that Africans, as the first people, have the greatest variation in uh, genetic alleles than in any other population. So when you see differences in population, it does not necessarily mean what people believe it means. It simply means that the variance is greater. We have to be very careful about how we think about these things, and we have to think about them in different ways, and we need young people to take a more systematic and scientific approach to understanding these health disparities differences that we've been able to do in the past. That's lesson one. Think about the data that you're using, and not just use, repeat what people tell you because they're confederates. You don't have to believe everything a confederate tells you, although we, just, we tend to do that. So people started coming, Africans started coming to America in the 1600s. Beginning after 1650, 1660, something like that, the vast majority of Africans brought to this country landed on one small section of one small island, and not more than 2% of black Americans can tell you which island that is. If you were to ask Jews which island they landed in, they will tell you. Irish, they will tell you. Black Americans, they will not. Because black Americans tend to know very little about black Americans, and it's about time that we learn. And just in case you want to go, it's Sullivan's Island across the harbor from Charleston as the pest colony where these slave ships landed. Why is it that we don't know about us? There's something wrong with that. And in order to understand how to solve health disparities, African Americans are going to have to do something very interesting. That is, learn about African Americans. The job. Something happened very interesting in 1891. There was a shift in leadership. Frederick Douglass died. W.E.B. Du Bois wrote a book on Philadelphia Negro, and Booker T. Washington started working at the Tuskegee Institute. Took the effort from Douglass and turned it into a new direction. One of the things that's interesting to me is that his economic movement was called the Tuskegee Experiment. Years later, when describing the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male, a junior editor changed the title of the book to the uh, from the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male to the Tuskegee Experiment. And today, Instead of talk, if you use that term, most African Americans believe that you're talking about the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male. The Tuskegee experiment was the most important economic development program for African Americans in the history of this country. It started the National Medical Association, National Bar Association, National Nurse Association, and the list goes on and on and on. And it started Negro Health Week which later became Public Health Week. And the reason that it's celebrated in April it is because it's Booker D. Washington's birthday. That's Public Health Week. And yet the vast majority of people don't even know something that simple. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. One of the most interesting things I've been uh, exposed to is a reminder or something called the end of slavery in America. Now, slavery was ended in eight, January of 1863. So Emancipation Day is in January. But Confederates kept that away from slaves in Texas for 18 months until June. So do African Americans mainly celebrate Emancipation Day? No, they celebrate June T when Confederates told them that they were free. They waited in slavery until the Confederates told them they were free, and that's what we celebrate. It is time to stop doing what Confederates tell you to do. It's time. It's time. You know?
This is a struggle. This is a struggle. And I thank God for Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump is making it clear to a lot of people what it is we have to do. If you stand by quiet today, you know you would have stood by quiet in 1861. You would have stayed on the plantation and worked. And the question is, are you going to stay on the plantation now and work? That's the question each of you are going to have to answer. Because it is absolutely clear now. In the 1960s, when a lot of those of us who are now entering our twilight years, I should say, <laughs> we are retiring from the scene and leaving it to another generation. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sure what's going to happen. We started a number of programs in the 19, beginning in the 1960s. Up until 1991, we started uh, efforts to uh, end unethical treatment of African Americans. We started uh, articles and activities to end things like the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male, which we became as the first group of black commissioned officers to come straight out of college and into the public health service in the 1960s. We were able to do that. We didn't pay the dues of public health service officers who worked and before they got into the public health service commission board. We just walked in. 